So I did a video a few months ago about free NAS replication tests. Free NAS replication, much like the name sounds, will replicate data sets from one free NAS to another free NAS. This is an excellent way to use the power of ZFS to replicate data over to another ZFS system. Free NAS it makes this pretty easy to do with their interface. Uh, they have a really cool system for uh, connecting it to another free NAS server, but I don't want people to mistake this for it's mirroring the server. It's mirroring the data sets you choose. Now I have, like I said, a, a more in-depth video that gets into the, how to set that up and showing how that works. But this mirroring process in terms of mirroring a data set, not a server, works really, really well and is very efficient and can work over even a lower bandwidth connections because uh, it uses the file level, the block level of ZFS to compare the two systems and get the data over to the other system. So any minor file changes you make, it can look at the binary differences between them, not just a file copy difference like other tools such as rsync, and then get that data moved over there. So it's looking at a differential between the data sets at the block level, which is one of the reasons it's so fast and efficient. It essentially is referred to as like syncing the deltas. So the delta is the difference between one system and the other in terms of the files at the file level block level. So this has been set up for quite a while. We've been using it for a long time. And this is my LTS video work. So all the video files, because videos are big, we store them all on the free NAS. Uh, it makes it really easy to edit. My system has a 10 gig connection from the workstation I'm recording this on, and it's dumping over a SMB share over to this free NAS box right here. It works really, really well. But of course, you know, I don't trust a single box because even though it's a RAID array, even though ZFS is very res resilient, uh, bad things happen sometimes. And those bad things sometimes include entire server motherboard meltdown failure catastrophic. Uh, the other things that can happen are some weird corruption from some weird thing that happened as well. Like I said, there's all kinds of edge cases. You can't trust a single machine for backup ever. Just not a good idea. So we have the replication task, and then we have the snapshots set up. Now these snapshots are also taken every day. So the replication is based on the snapshot frequency. We snapshot daily, which means we replicate daily. One day is fine for my videos, uh, but for some scenarios, for some clients, when we put redundant servers in, they want snapshots done every hour because losing one hour of data has a cost associated with it. So maybe you want to set this more uh, frequently. There is obviously a cost if I dumped a bunch of videos I did in one day, then the catastrophic failure happens before the replication task, but one day seems like a good enough risk for me uh, for doing the data. Now, keep snapshot for one week. I'm keeping snapshots for one week because that gives me seven days to figure out that I oops the file or deleted something. So for example, if I were to accidentally go in and purge something I needed, I have up to seven days from when that snapshot was taken to roll back to it. And that's pretty easy to do. So we go to storage, snapshots, and then you can choose a snapshot. Here's a LTS video work from 5.9, 5.4, you know, different dates here. And we could just clone or roll it back. Now roll back versus clone. Roll back means just reset it back to that state in that instance. Clone means create another copy of it so I can see something. So I don't touch the main data, but I've made another folder essentially where I can look at what it looked like then and see the difference between them. These are, you know, features of snapshots. But what about the replication? Well, the replication goes over to another free NAS server. And we're still running the 11.1-U7 train on this one because with this one, we want it to, um, because I have clients that still have questions about 11.1, this sometimes makes it easy for answer living in a production, but as those questions fall off, I'll eventually swap this one 11 to, but it works perfectly fine. You can replicate between free NAS versions. Uh, doesn't seem to be any compatibility problems that I found at all. Um, but like I said, eventually I will move this to 11 to. Now here's those same snapshots. The replication task doesn't just replicate the last snapshot, it re replicates all the previous snapshots all the time. So they also have one week retention. Now there's no snapshot task on here doing this, so when you look at the periodic snapshot tests, there's uh, one for some other things we have on here, but there's not one for there. See, so with the replication test, there's none on here because everything starts at the 3.8 and moves back over to this one. Well, I refer to this one as Dozer and this one is Tank. So everything starts at Dozer, moves over to Tank, which is our 3.4 server. So this data is being replicated between these. And 
way we go. So we have a backup. And the next part that people get a little bit confused about, I'm going to show you what it looks like from a command prompt level, is here is the dozer one at the bottom, and here's all the video files. And here's the uh, tank one at the top, and here's all the video files. I had just done this video for FreeNAS U4 the other day, and you can see it is there. Now this is where sometimes people get confused. Can you work off or edit from this other server? You'll mess things up if you do. So there's not a way to do anything but read only all the files that are on the destination of the replication. So some people think that like there's an easy way just to push the data back. FreeNAS doesn't have any automated one-click push because the replication task picks a landing area, that landing area being this particular FreeNAS server. And this is the source. So this one pushes all the data over to this one, but it's not a two-way synchronization system. This is not rsync. This is not a mirroring system like a RAID array between two servers. This is a, it takes the data and moves over there. Now, if you want to restore anything, you have to go through either A, create a replication task that sets the other server as a destination, or or sync the files or copy the files via, uh, you know, a share, things like that. But when it comes to restoring, it's not like it's like, oh, there's a problem. Let me just hit a button and push it back the other way. Freeness doesn't exactly work that way. And this is a question that seems to come up quite a bit is can I just instantly mirror it back over there? That's not how this particular system works. There are systems that do that. For example, I use sync thing for some of our other data. And by changing things in one sync thing pool, it will change it in the other sync thing pools, but that's a different tool. And the same with rsync. You can use rsync to rsync to folders. That's another method you may want to use if you want that type of feature. So when you have it constantly rsyncing between the two of them, when you do it in one, it can push the changes back to the other and vice versa. So with this system here, if there was a failure, I would have to kind of manually do the data back. This is not like failover redundancy, but I want to make sure that's actually something I really want. So if anything does occur, one, I'm going to notice because, well, my video server would be offline. Two, I want to figure out what was the cause. You know, was it some type of destructive thing? Did someone get in there and hack something? Whatever the reason was over on this side, I want to know before I start pushing the data. I want to maintain this as a data integrity. Downside is with it automatically replicating, if I you know, had something in here uh, that I deleted all the files and I waited seven days, it would replicate away all that data. So that's why you have to think about retention. But I figure within seven days, I'll notice something's wrong. So I have seven days to catch up with uh, fixing the problem. But it's actually pretty simple. Um, you can easily access all the data here. I could just open up a share. But once you do that and do any type of read write on the replication, it will stop replicating because it'll realize you tampered with the files and caused a lot of errors, but not a big deal. Uh, the best way to do it would actually be, because here's how it looks, would be just to clone one of these snapshots for a read, write, and be able to pull the files out and create a share on it. So replicating data back is not that hard. And that's what I wanted to cover. There's not really a simple way to do it other than creating another replication task if you had to do it. And let's walk through a catastrophic failure. If this server were to completely melt down, destroy itself, and be unrecoverable, the drives through some type of, I don't know, lightning strike, high-powered surge that wrecks every drive simultaneously, uh, or it falls or something, whatever, something catastrophic uh, where this drive is not recoverable, it wouldn't be that hard to simply build a new FreeNAS server, go over here to replication, and replicate it back the other way. That's actually completely possible. Once you've replicated it once that way, you would start the process over and replicate it back to this server if I needed to. So I just wanted to cover that kind of as a planning, thinking about how you do these. Uh, not that hard to do, but there's not a one-click backup for it. It's more or less what I would purpose this video because I've just, so every time someone asks, well, isn't there just a quick way to keep these in sync all the time and restore like a disaster recovery? There is, but it's still kind of a manual process. You just go through the replication process in reverse. So it's not too hard to do. It's just a simple process. But uh, I kind of like it that way because, you know, you don't want it to, uh, if there's a problem on one, to start pushing data back the other way. You want to kind of do this in a controlled environment because ideally your data shouldn't be just disappearing. So um, but we've been using it for a long time. I've never had a problem with it. I've actually never had to restore it because I'm reasonably careful with the exception of that one time I deleted a music folder when I was purging out old videos. Um, but uh, that's the one time I had to do the restore and I just had to go through a snapshot because I did, oh, oops, and had to roll back one day uh, to put my music folder back. Other than that, I've never had a problem 
uh, doing it. But, you know, it's important to have all these things on here. And it's if you didn't have them, uh, Murphy's Law says if you didn't have any backups, you definitely would oops a bunch of things and not be able to roll back. So hopefully this is a helpful kind of explainer. This still works great. Um, I will link to the snapshot video and how you do the replication down below. Uh, but it's still one of the reasons we love ZFS. We love the way it works for in FreeNAS to you know maintain and manage all the data that we have on here. Uh, it definitely works great for that. And you can use this for other things such as if I wanted to uh, snapshot and replicate, for example, all the VMs I have stored on here. I could, but I actually still use uh, Zen Orchestra to manage all the backups for that because I think it handles them in a better way. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below, which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.